Jesus called his twelve disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out evil spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. The Bible contains remarkable stories of miracles and divine interventions. Moses parted the sea. Peter healed a man lame from his mother's womb. Jesus drove demons out of people and raised others from the dead. But are these types of events still happening today? We too have a beam of divine light and guidance that God has put within the heart of every man. And it's one of the greatest proofs that there is a God. More amazing supernatural things are happening than we realize. This is Divine Intervention, the interview show that features intriguing people who've experienced the hand of God in amazing ways. Divine Intervention was created and produced with the purpose of encouraging believers, spiritual seekers, and skeptics alike that Jesus is alive and is still performing miracles and working in the world today. I believe in miracles. Here's your host, Daniel Fazina. Hello, friend, and welcome to Divine Intervention Radio. I am your host, Daniel Fazina, and you are listening to the interview show that features intriguing people who've experienced the hand of God in amazing ways. You can find us online at divineinterventionradio.com, facebook.com forward slash divineinterventionradio, and you can follow me, Daniel Fazina, at danielfazina1 on twitter.com. That's twitter.com slash danielfazina, the numeral one. Friend, I want to ask you a question. If you had a child and that child was abducted and missing, just gone from your life, would your faith survive? And if so, how? Well, we're going to ask these questions and many more to our special guest, Marie White, uh, because she experienced just that. Marie White is the author of five books, including the award-winning number one bestseller, Strength for Parents of Missing Children, Surviving Divorce, Abduction, Runaways, and foster care. She's also a missionary, traveler, entrepreneur, and YouTube host with over a half a million views. She owns Zami's Press, an inspirational publishing company, and Marie encourages people from all walks of life experiencing a variety of struggles to know that there is hope. Her website is mariewhiteauthor.com, and it's my pleasure to welcome Marie White right now on Divine Intervention Radio. Marie, you are on Divine Intervention Radio. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm excited to be here, Daniel. Thank you for having me. Well, it's my pleasure and honor. I'm very excited to be speaking to you because uh, although you have a very uh, serious topic and um, kind of a tragic story, there's also a bit of uh, positivity and redemption, and I love the way that you are so energetic and bubbly, and uh, you know, you're using your story and your pain to benefit others, and I just love that about you. So thanks again. Oh, thank you. It's a privilege. All right. So before we get to your story, uh, why don't you take us to the beginning and tell us a little bit about your background, your faith journey, and maybe how you came to know Jesus in the first place. Absolutely. Well, you know, it's kind of a funny story because so many people now think, oh, you know, she must have been raised in this Christian home by by Billy Graham and probably, you know, <laughs> you know Mother Teresa and these amazing people that have obviously, you know, raised them to have this faith, and, and actually, my husband and I both grew up in non-believing homes. Oh, okay. So wonderful, moral, you know, happy families, but non-believing homes, and actually, I came in with a better, as an adult, came in with a better knowledge than he did, because as it turned out, there were churches in the towns we lived in. Ah. It was free child care for a couple of hours on a Sunday morning. <laughs> <laughs> So my siblings and I were each given two quarters, one for the offering plate and one to get a piece of candy on the way home, and we were sent out the door faithfully for most of the years of our life. Hmm. So this was... Um, Great background. Okay, so basically your parents were like, oh, we need just a, we need some child care for a few hours on Sundays, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, it's amazing how God can use anything uh, to get us into the kingdom. So what was your um, what was your experience like going to these churches and... And how did you, um, you know, come to accept the message of Christ? Well, we moved around a lot, so we saw a lot of different churches. We moved about every two years, and so we went to Methodist churches and Catholic churches and Protestant churches and just, you know, a number of different um, denominations, mostly just within the um, Christian community, not within, you know, Catholic or anything like that. Um, but we kind of got to get a background and knowledge of who he was and always know him. And then at different points in our family's life, I think my parents came to church for like a year, 
to a Church of Christ for a while. And I believe at that point I probably accepted Christ because I have a Bible from that time period with my name in it and things that I think I did, but I don't remember that. Hmm. Okay. So then how did you um, become the uh, the wonderful, bubbly, faithful person that you are today? Because uh, obviously we have to <laughs> fast forward a little bit, right? <laughs> well, and my husband and I met when we were both in the military. We were both in the Air Force. Okay. And he did not know Jesus at all. He actually didn't even know who Jesus was. He was how, the, how is that possible to, to grow up in America and not know who Jesus was? Right. But that is true. And right now, especially in our post-Christian culture, we see that a lot. People with it available, but they just have never made this couple steps down the road to the church near them. Wow. That's so a... he really didn't know. And when we were in the military after we got married, he went and was TDY, temporary duty, over in Las Vegas, of all places, and his roommate there introduced him to Christ. Wow. That's wonderful. Finding Christ in Sin City. I love it. Absolutely. He came home from that, and he was like, you have to accept Jesus into your heart. And I was like, oh, no, 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 I know who Jesus is, and I know that I am not good enough. Hmm. And uh, my life is not where it needs to be, and I'm not who I need to be. Yep. I'm glad for you that you did that, but I have no intention of doing that because I am not where I need to be. When my life is in the right place, then I'll accept Christ into my heart. And for three days, that man, that stubborn, stubborn man <laughs> would not let us. I am not going to be in heaven without you. You will accept Christ. You need to do this. And finally, at the end of three days, I finally said, you know what, Lord? You know me. You know I do not deserve you. But I am happy to give you my life if you'll take it. Hmm. Isn't that amazing how so many people, I think, um, feel the same way that you did? Like, I'm not good enough for God. And I can't. I have to get everything together first before I come to you. And you know what? Um in a sense, we, we aren't good enough for God. We're, there's nothing that you know we can do to earn salvation, but yet we don't have to get it all together before we come to him. Jesus says, come as you are. Take my yoke upon me, for my, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Uh, come to me if you're, if you're looking for rest for your soul. And I know my wife uh, felt the same way you did, and um, she was raised in a, in a, a home, a Buddhist home, actually, and where it was all about works, and you had to kind of, she thought she had to earn her way and get herself cleaned up before she came to the Lord. And uh, when she realized that it was all a free gift of grace, you know, that she didn't have to have it all together, that she could come as she was. Matter of fact, the song that really ministered to her was Come As You Are. They were singing that in church, and that was the aha moment for her to go forth and, and give her life to the Lord. So, uh, we can definitely relate to that. And friend, if you're listening, and, and maybe that's you, maybe you think like you have to have your life together. You're uh, you're not good enough for God. Well, you know what? You're not good enough. But He loves you so much that He sent Jesus to die for you in your place. You don't have to have it all figured out. You don't have to have your life together. Just just give Him your life. You know, just say, Lord, here I am. Take me with all my brokenness, with all my sin, with all my imperfections, and He will take you as you are. Um, and that's essentially the message of the gospel. And and how we can come to know the Lord and have a relationship with Him. You're listening to Divine Intervention Radio. I'm your host, Daniel Fazina, and we are visiting with our special guest, Marie White. So, Marie, you had your husband had this uh, kind of dramatic conversion experience uh, after never knowing who Jesus was, and then you gave your life to the Lord. Uh, how old were you at that point? Uh, we were both in our 20s. Okay. And how did life go from there? I guess you experienced things that kind of confirmed your belief that he was real? Absolutely. I mean, it was just, there was a slow growth process in the beginning. I think the first two years we were a little, you know, we wanted to go somewhere. We tried a couple churches. We just didn't find anything that fit. And then we moved, and it just, you know, our children were born, and it became all-consuming that we needed to be somewhere where they could learn who God was, and they could have that same knowledge of him from a young age. And do you have any... Um specific instances of where you knew that God was intervening, maybe speaking to you or answering prayers? Or, I mean, how do you, I mean, there's a difference between head knowledge and experiential knowledge. So um, how did that come into play? Well, there are a lot of instances that happened um, during that time period before the traumatic event that you and I are going to talk about. But I kind of want to save some of those for when, when we talk about what happened, because I think those are going to have more of an impact when we talk about them then. Okay. Well, why don't we do that? Let's move to 
you know, fast forwarding, you have uh, several children and uh, you had a pretty devastating traumatic event happen three years ago. And I understand that the investigation is ongoing, so you can't go into detail about exactly what happened. But tell us what you can about that day that uh, three years ago. Well, Daniel, three years ago, our toddler was abducted. Oh, my gosh. The youngest of our children. I can't even imagine what that's like, being a father of a toddler myself. Right. Well, and our toddler was the same age as your toddler is right now. Okay. About six months older than your toddler. And so at three and a half, to have our child abducted was just, I mean, it, it is every parent's worst nightmare. And it really becomes that moment when, for us, when your faith really, you know, rubber meets the road. Do you believe what it is you say you believe? If you believe that God is good and you believe that he is in control, then how can this happen? And if it has happened, how does that affect your walk with him? Mm, a very good question, one I'm interested to hear, and I'm sure our listeners are wondering themselves, because a trauma like that, I mean, it's one of the worst things that can ever happen to a person, in my opinion. It is. You know for yourself that if, if your child, you know, you have to get them a shot. When they're in pain, when anything happens to them, you would gladly trade places with them in a heartbeat. Absolutely. And to not be able to do that in an instance where you don't know what's happening to your child, you can imagine the worst, it is, it is awful. I mean, it's that feeling that when you're in the grocery store and your kid goes behind your leg or, you know, creeps around the cart or something, and for a moment you don't see them and you, and you completely lose your mind, that moment never ends. My gosh. Not like the movies. You don't get to fall to the floor and cry out, Lord, why, why did this happen? It doesn't happen like that. When your child is abducted, whether it's by a relative or an ex-spouse or a stranger or the government, whatever reason it happens, in that moment, you don't have time to break down. There is no, you know, crying. There is no screaming. There is no fainting. There is only action. Hmm. Your body goes into fight or flight immediately. You are surging with adrenaline and cortisol, all the stress hormones, and your body is completely out of control. Your mind doesn't even work correctly. It took me three days, three days, Daniel, and I'm not an unintelligent person, to realize that the reason that I wanted to vomit was because I was under stress. Oh, my gosh. I can't even imagine. I mean, I, I've had instances where, like, I'm, maybe I turn my back or something and my, my daughter goes into a different room or maybe she even goes out the front door. Uh, I've had that happen once where she she figured out how to open the lock and went out the front door, and I heard the door go, and then I you know I rush outside and I don't see her, and it turns out she's around the corner playing on the side of the house. But I'm thinking, oh my gosh, did she run into traffic or what happened? And you're right, that that heart pounding surge of adrenaline, it's like you're you're definitely in fight or flight mode, and it's terrifying. And I can't even I mean you know that's lasted for you know a few moments, a minute or two for me, but to have that go on constantly for you. I can't even imagine, how do you function? How do you go on from this? And that's the big question, isn't it? Because for a lot of people, they don't go on. The reason that I'm here talking with you today is because eventually through this process, God brought me to write a book called Strength for Parents of Missing Children because each day one parent takes their own life because they cannot handle any more the stress and the fear and the worry that we each have for our children. My gosh. And it's unbelievable to live in that feeling for years. And this has been going on for over three years for you. Yes, it has. But God has been so faithful, Daniel. I, I mean, I, that's why I want to tell you some of these things I wanted to share with you and your listeners, just the amazing things he's done. Well, One yeah. thing in particular was to call out to him, and just say, Lord, are we, is there any chance that we are asking you for something you are telling us not to ask for? Hmm. Is there any chance that you're trying to tell us, it's been this many years, move on, be done with this, let it go, your child's not coming home? Is there any chance we're hearing you wrong? And praying that prayer at night and just saying again, Lord, tell me again it's going to be okay. And the next day, to have an email from a missionary in Greece saying, I just want to let you know that while I was praying for you and your missing child, the Lord really just pressed on my heart to tell you to keep fighting, to keep going. They'll be home. 
Mm, that is very encouraging. It's amazing that um, you know you would get that email from from God. It's just like in the midst of our pain, in the midst of our despair, He's there. He's listening to us, and He is in control. I don't know why you know things like this happen to you or in the. I mean, in a macro level, I, obviously, I know that because people are sinful and they have their own free will and they can affect us by their choices. But why this happens to you, I think there's going to be. Um, I think you'll know eventually, and I think you're you're probably onto it right now with, you know, with the many books you've written, uh, the the latest one. Well, I don't know if it's your latest, but Strength for Parents of Missing Children, Surviving Divorce, Abduction, Runaways, and Foster Care. You've written five books uh, so far, and I think that's uh, that's amazing, an amazing feat, uh, because I know what it's like to write a book. It's like it takes a lot of work, a lot of discipline, a lot of perseverance. It's almost like giving birth when you write a book. And to do it under the circumstances you did it in, to have all that emotional turmoil, I don't know how you were able to even focus, but I commend you. Thank you. You're welcome. So, Marie, do you know um, offhand or maybe in the research that you've done, how many children go missing in the United States every year? Um, The statistics are not necessarily per year. Right now there are 2 million children and families that have been affected by missing children here in the United States, 22 million who are dealing with um, children who are kept from one parent or another parent to a nasty divorce case or a struggle like that. Right. So when we think of missing children, most of us immediately think of kidnapping or abduction, but there are other types of missing children. Um, so you mentioned a couple. Are there are there others as well? There are. There are um, children who are medically kidnapped. We saw a lot of that within these past couple of years. Um, children who are going in for a, you know, they go to the pediatrician. The pediatrician says they have cancer. The parent says, I want a second opinion. And the doctor says, I don't think so. Call social services and the child is then taken into foster care and given whatever medical care that doctor wants to give them. Oh my gosh. I, I've heard of that and that's terrifying for me. My wife and I are both cancer survivors and um, wow. I can't even imagine like because I, I had alternative therapy. I got several different opinions but I was of age. I was 27 at the time. But to not have the choice to do that for your child who's sick, I mean, how is that uh, fair or even legal? I don't, I don't understand that. Until I dove into this world, I had no idea how many things that were not legal were happening. And even if something illegal does happen to you, then it can take years to unravel that. Wow. So just as a hypothetical, if my daughter were sick with cancer and I chose to um, not get chemotherapy right away, are you telling me I could lose my child? Yes. To the state? Yes. Wow. That's crazy. Uh, that is every case, obviously. Right. But it happens often enough that if you type in medical kidnapping, uh, there, will, there will be, you know, dozens of websites and so many times that this has happened for people. So you- it's really, it's happening a lot right now. We also see... Um, parents that are getting divorced and one parent is taking and actually kidnapping or abducting the the child and either taking them to another state or another country. My goodness. Now, do they have the legal right to do that as their parent? They do not have the legal right to do that, especially if they are in a a joint custody situation or a lot of times they don't even have custody. Oh, wow. That's actually one of the cases I outline in the back of the book is a, um, a man named Brett Hohenberger who was having breakfast with his two young sons one morning when there was a banging at the door, when he opened the door, his kids were pushed over to their estranged mom who did not have custody of them. He was put in handcuffs and taken to jail. She had called with false allegations. And he was in jail for weeks before the judge and the authorities got all the details straightened out, released him, and by then she had taken the children and run. Oh, my gosh. That is crazy. So in that sense, you're, you're kind of guilty yes. before proven innocent? <laughs> yes. That is absolutely what's happening right now. It costs nothing for someone to falsely accuse somebody, but the person who is falsely accused, it costs them everything. That is crazy. And, you know, we're supposed to be living in a society where you're innocent until proven guilty. But in reality, I mean, I, I mean I've had friends who uh, were accused of different things, and they, they go before a grand jury, and, you know, that's supposed to be where 
you can present evidence to be uh, indicted. But uh, every one of the grand jurors assume you're guilty or you wouldn't be there. And so he had to actually, you know, it took him hours to prove to a grand jury that he was not guilty. So they did not indict him, and the government was very surprised at that. But, uh, you, you know, the government, you know, the cards are stacked against you if you go to a grand jury. Uh, because, like I said, they, they assume you're guilty or you wouldn't be there. So it's really uh, – it's a crazy thing to overcome that psychological barrier of the jury, uh, you know, the jurors, and also uh, sometimes just the government is just very heavy-handed. Well, and one thing that really surprised me is that people that um, started reading this were parents of drug-addicted children. Mm. They're adult children who are addicted to drugs and are missing for days or months or years, and the parents are going through all the same emotions that we're going through. And so they've been buying the book and writing in and saying, this book is for us. God is speaking to us through this. Yeah, amen. Again, the book is called Strength for Parents of Missing Children, Surviving Divorce, Abduction, Runaways, and Foster Care. We're speaking with uh, the author, uh, my new friend, Marie White, and uh, I'm just thrilled to have her on. Again, this is Divine Intervention Radio, and I'm your host, Daniel Fazina. Marie, just we got a couple of minutes before the break, but um, you talked about earlier that um, you wanted to vomit and you didn't know why for three days. Can you talk about the stress and what you know what this kind of um, trauma can do to a person physically to a parent of a missing child? Absolutely. I think that was probably the one thing we were the most prepared for, um, you know, knowledge-wise, but the least prepared for when it actually happened. We had been foster parents and taking in children for years, and so we knew what traumatized children looked like and what they needed and what was happening with their bodies. So intellectually, we knew this is what happens when someone experiences trauma. But when you're in the trauma, your brain actually doesn't quite synapse properly. And because of the rush of adrenaline and cortisol, your stress hormones, your body can't always process everything exactly right. And you know that before a football game or you know an Olympics match, it's not unusual to see someone vomit on the sidelines. Mm-hmm. They're nervous, they're pent up, they've got all that energy inside, they're ready to go. Well, for us, I didn't realize that. I'm just thinking in my head the whole time, you've got to be strong, you've got to be strong, you've got to be strong. You've got to stay strong for your child, you've got to keep it together. And so every time I felt this emotion, I would just push it down, like, you know, no, no, just keep, you know, keep going, keep going. And finally, after three days, it clicked. It was, it's okay to not be okay. This is a big deal. Mm. This is the worst thing that could happen. It's all right that you feel like this. And once I l- gave into that for a moment and let myself let it out of the system, then I was fine. Good, good. Okay. So, yeah, you definitely have to uh, let it out, not keep it pent in. Well, friend, we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we're going to hear more from Marie White. She is a missionary. She's an author of the book Strength for Parents of Missing Children, Surviving Divorce, Abduction, Runaways, and Foster Care. We're going to hear what the Lord is doing in her life and how he's using this tragedy to positively impact the lives of many others and encourage them. So stay with us here on Divine Intervention. We'll be right back. We'll be right back with more from Daniel Pazina and Divine Intervention right after this. Hi, it's Kevin McCullough. You may know me from talk radio or from Fox News Channel, but I want to talk to you about something that you may not have ever considered before, the potential that you could get free energy. (laughs) Now, I know it seems unbelievable, and you may have heard the expression, there's no such thing as a free lunch. But in the world of energy, it is possible to have your monthly electrical and natural gas bills eliminated. That's one of the benefits of the program with Ambit Energy. My good friend, the energy consultant, Daniel Fazina, has talked about this on radio with me. But today, we're interested in helping you find out more. So if you're looking for information on how it works, try this URL, freepowernow.com. That's freepowernow.com. And if you're ready now to get free energy, grab your utility bill and dial 205-55-AMBIT. That's 205-55-AMBIT or freepowernow.com. 
Hey, this is Daniel Fazina of Divine Intervention Radio. The Bible contains some incredible stories of miracles and divine interventions. Jesus calmed a raging storm, healed paralytics, and even raised the dead. But are these types of events still happening today? The answer to this question, as you will see from reading my book, Divine Intervention, 50 True Stories of God's Miracles Today, is an emphatic yes. Contained within the book is a collection of amazing true stories that attest to this fact. You will read the astonishing first-hand accounts of people who have been healed of paralysis, terminal cancer, and tumors through prayer. You will see the love of God powerfully transform the life of an Islamic terrorist. You will witness the liberation of the demon-possessed, the resurrection of the dead, and much more. Prepare to be awed and inspired as you experience divine intervention. More information about divine intervention, 50 true stories of God's miracles today can be found at www.divineinterventionradio.com or by calling 800 247 47 That's 1-800-247-4784. Divine Intervention welcomes the support of Letirzo Associates, Certified Public Accountants. Letirzo Associates, Certified Public Accountants, is a family-owned and operated Christian business serving their clients with quality accounting services for over 40 years. Offering full-service accounting for any type of business, large or small, in any state of the union. Letirzo Associates, Certified Public Accountants, 12 Oak Street, No. 5, West Hampton Beach, New York, 11978, phone 631 288 3334 that's 631-288-3334 here comes jesus christ the man would never know he's got by the size hi this is jay jack the lead singer for apologetics the christian parody band and you're listening to divine intervention radio with our good friend daniel fazina He says, Jesus, if he sees me, I'll be better, yes, indeed. Because they told us that he knows just what it takes to make us whole, yes. You gotta Welcome back to Divine Intervention Radio. I'm your host, Daniel Fazina, www.divineinterventionradio.com. Facebook.com forward slash Divine Intervention Radio. You can find me on Twitter as well at Daniel Fazina1 on Twitter.com, Daniel Fazina, the numeral one, on Twitter.com. If you're just tuning in, we are speaking with our special guest, Marie White, who is an Amazon best selling author of the book Strength for Parents of Missing Children. Surviving Divorce, Abduction, Runaways, and Foster Care. She's also written four other books, and her website is mariewhiteauthor.com. Marie, welcome back. Thank you, Daniel. What a great intro. (laughs) No problem. You know, before the break, we were talking about your experience of having an abducted toddler, one of the worst things that can ever happen to a parent. But in the midst of that and even before that, you had some experiences that let you know that God was real God was in control, and he was uh, active in your life. Can you tell us some of those encouraging stories? Absolutely. I'm going to take you back to the time just within a couple of weeks after our child was abducted. Obviously, those first couple of weeks, we were pretty numb, running on autopilot, doing everything that we had to do, trying to, you know, find our child and, and, you know, try and somehow get them home. And so those first couple of weeks were just, 24-7 24-7 spiritual warfare. And it honestly, it felt like Satan was on my back gnawing at it all night long. It was just horrific. Oh my gosh. The fear, the worry, the just, oh my gosh. It, it felt like our room was filled with evil every time the light went out. It was horrible. And yet, in the midst of all that, God again and again showed up. And I remember at one point, just really just being on the floor of my room, and it would be, you know, times where you would be doing everything else you had to do in life. You're still calling places. You're still, you know, do you leave the house? Do you not leave the house? You don't really know what to do. And yet in the middle of that, God would continue to reach down and hold us up. And at one point on the floor in my room, just having a moment with him and just going, Lord, why would you allow this to happen? Our child had a good life. They were safe and they were loved. How could you allow this? And just to feel like his answer to my heart was, this was always going to happen. But I taught you how to raise them so that they could handle this. Mm. And that was unbelievable because really the way we raised our youngest child was 
in some ways so different from what we had raised our older children. There was this sense that we had to take advantage of every moment because we didn't know when it would end. And we had that from the time they were born. I mean, I don't have any regrets. I don't have any, oh, I wish I would have played more with my child. Oh, I wish I would have rocked more or done this or that. I don't have any of those because I felt like God gave us this entire time with them, that he gave us the ability to see this could be your last moment. Take advantage of it. Wow. So obviously God knew this was going to happen, and do you feel like he had prepared you in some sense ahead of time for it? Yes. I mean, it was a shock that it happened, but I prepared us spiritually ahead of time hmm. so that we could handle it when it happened. I mean, I, when I look at it, I think who in the world else was as prepared as we were. Wow. Knew what trauma would do. Who had that spiritual relationship with him that was so strong that when this happened, instead of crumbling, we grew stronger. And our whole church came alive. Revival came through that church. People were at our house constantly praying. People were getting saved when they heard the story. I mean, it was just amazing. That is amazing. Isn't that like God, too? You know, I think he, obviously he's omniscient, so he knows what's going to happen. He, he has a plan for our lives. And, you know, the word says that um, all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and who are the called according to his purpose. It doesn't promise that everything that happens will be good, but he has a, a, an amazing ability to bring all those pieces together and work it out for good. So in the midst of this horrible tragedy that you went through, there is good coming out of it. And, um, you know, when my wife and I, when we had our baby, we, we realized that this is a precious gift. It's really, this baby is not ours. It's, it's God's. And they're on loan to us for as long as he would will that they be here. So we have the, uh, the ability and the duty to raise them up, you know, as best we can. But realizing that they're not ours and we have to give them to, to the Lord and we're just the caretakers and, you know, it's it's kind of it's easy to say that, but the reality of it is if and when you lose them, that's where the rubber meets the road, so to speak. As you as you mentioned, and, and as much as we might know it in our head that the child is the Lord's, it's still difficult. I mean, that's I mean that's an understatement, I would think. Yes, and you're right because you do know that intellectually, and then all of a sudden it happens, and you're like, do I really believe this? Right, and we do. And God was not silent. He was not silent in any of He has not been silent. Believe me, in the past couple of weeks, we have seen such breakthroughs in the case that we are just so hopeful that any day now, our child could be home. But what He's done in the meantime is one thing, you know, I really just called out to Him. I just said, Lord, what do you want me to do with this pain? What do you want me to do with this time? There is a reason you have allowed this. James McDonald says there's the three-question final exam. Do you believe that God is in control? Do you believe that God is good? And are you willing to wait by faith until the darkness becomes light? Mm. Wow. And we are willing to wait for that. And in those moments of darkness, he showed up in ways we could never have imagined. That's and within a couple of months of our child being taken and me calling out to him, Lord, what would you have me do? I really felt like he wanted me to move forward and start a YouTube channel that we wish had existed when all of our family came to Christ. And they all have except for one person in all of my husband's family and my family. Wow. They have all come to Christ. And what we wish they would have had is something called Bible Stories for Adults. It's a YouTube channel with over 110 videos, and it takes new adult believers through all the stories of the Bible in short two- to four-minute videos. Hmm. You never have to be in church and not understand what the pastor is talking about. That's amazing. I didn't realize how many people were, you know, not only just not saved, but have no idea what the Bible says or even who Jesus is. I mean, when you mentioned your husband growing up without knowing who Jesus was, um, that's just kind of foreign to me, but I, I need to get out of my bubble, I guess, and realize that that is the case. And I grew up in 
uh, Long Island, New York, that's, which is not the Bible Belt. I mean, most of my friends were not Christian, but at least they had a cursory idea. Of it. I mean, they knew who Jesus was, uh, but they weren't um, obviously disciples of his. And, uh, you know, when I moved down to, to Virginia, where I am now, for me, it was like uh, kind of a breath of fresh air because, <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of Christians here. There's a lot of churches. Um, you know, I think on Long Island, you maybe have like 1% of the people who are really, truly following Christ, um, born-again believers. Even though there's a lot of churches, there, there's a lot of people. There's 2 point something million people, and uh, all the congregations are very small. But when you come down here to the Bible Belt, you know, you got churches with thousands and thousands of members, and it's almost like you can uh, close your eyes, spin around, throw a rock, and hit a Christian. And uh, I almost kind of assume, like, when I talk to people that they're already saved down here. But, you know, right. in my hometown where I grew up, I would assume when I meet people that they don't know the Lord. But I have to understand, you know, the, the pastor was saying there, the area where I live in, he said, I think 30% of the people don't know the Lord or there's... And I'm like, wow, that means 70% do. That's amazing. <laughs> I thought, anyway. But I digress. Oh, um, my goodness. It's just, yeah, my perspective. But, um, you know, getting back to your story, I, I wanted to ask you, tell me some of the good things and some of the um, the testimonies you've received from people who have watched your YouTube channel and also have benefited or in some way been encouraged by your story and the way that you have responded to your tragedy. It's been a terrible privilege. That's an interesting phrase, a good way to put it. <laughs> he's done some things where he's just brought people out of the woodwork. I mean, people are coming, they're writing, they're writing from England, from Japan. I mean, I get to, as a missionary online, I get to talk to people from Myanmar and Iran. And when I'm talking with these people in closed countries, and they ask, what is it going to cost me? to become a believer. I know what it will cost them because I have paid it. Mm. What happened to us happened because we're believers. It happened because we're vocal in our faith. We understand now what Job was talking about when Job said, though he slay me, still I will praise him. I used to read that and think, you know, oh, poor Job, he lost everything. Oh, here Job is going, though he slay me, still I will praise him. And now I know. Now I know when I read that, that it was in defiance of the enemy and what he was coming at him with, that he was shaking his fist at the enemy and looking at the sky and saying, in spite of everything I feel, I will still praise him. So you believe or you know that your child, you were targeted, your child was targeted because you're a Christian? Yes. Okay. Now that's a, that's a key point in the story. This is not just some random abduction or... You know, the Bible talks about that we will face persecution because of our faith in Christ. I just never uh, connected that with your missing child. But you would think maybe you might think this happens in places like, you know, in, in Muslim countries or communist countries or whatever, but it's not beyond the possibility to happen right here in America, especially in the culture we're living in now that seems to be more and more post Christian. Absolutely. And right now, the biggest thing you can say that will get somebody to target you is that you're a believer and you believe what the Bible says. Wow, that is crazy. Um, you know, if there's someone listening to this interview right now who may be struggling with uh, the loss of a child, whether they were abducted or just separated, uh, you know, through a divorce or what have you, what would be your advice to that family who, who just maybe their world is just shattered without their child? They don't know where to turn or what to do. I think the biggest thing that I can impart to someone going through something that's hard, whether it's something like this or their own, you know, physical or uh, spiritual battle that they're going through, is that tomorrow comes whether we want it to or not. And who we are tomorrow is our choice. We have a choice when we go through something like this. We can either come out of it broken, bitter, or we can come out of it better. We can be the people God has always intended for us to be. And sometimes something like this is the wake-up call, the one thing we need, the stepping-off point to becoming who it is we've always wanted to be. And for those who are separated from their children, whether it's in something like what we're going through or something like a messy divorce, the last thing your child wants to do when they come home is find you sitting on the floor in a pile of chocolate wrappers. 
<laughs> or worse. <laughs> we're always made to be. Right. Let them come home and find that person. Wow. Awesome. Good advice. Good advice. Friend, you're listening to Divine Intervention Radio. I'm your host, Daniel Fazina, and our special guest today is Marie White. She's a missionary and an author. She wrote the book Strength for Parents of Missing Children, Surviving Divorce, Abduction, Runaways, and Foster Care, uh, and four other books as well. Her website is mariewhiteauthor.com. Now, Marie, I have to ask you this as well. Um, being someone who's gone through this horrific trauma in your life, I'm sure you were surrounded by friends and family, well-meaning, who probably said some not so helpful things. And, you know, for people who are listening who want to support people who've gone through trauma, loss, things like that, can you give us some advice and pointers on what to say and what not to say? Because, I mean, I've heard people, like, for example, one of my family members lost a child through um, a miscarriage. And some well-meaning person came along and said, well, at least you have other children. And that was kind of not a, not a good thing to say, not very helpful. Um, so do you have any advice for people who want to be supportive uh, but just maybe don't know what to say in a situation like this? I do, I do. And also to, that, to what you just said, um, that actually is said by a lot of people, two, two parents like us, and I see it on the Facebook support groups and things that I belong to. And one of the, the little memes that has come out from that is when, uh, when someone says to you, at least you have other children, um, you ask them which one of their children they would be willing to give up. Mm. <laughs> that should make people think. <laughs> I thought, well, that would not be giving a good answer. God would not like that. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, is, it hurts. And you know what? It's funny, though. People will say things in that moment that will hurt us no matter what. Mm. Someone came to us and said, um, you know, you just need to let it go. They're not coming home. You just need to get over this. Wow. How do you and get over the loss of a child, though? And as much as that hurt me, and I just wanted to just, you know, scream, whatever, God was so good to give me insight to what they really meant. What they meant was, it's hurting us to see you hurting. Mm. And you please stop hoping so that we can stop watching you in pain. It's it's not really about them, though, is it? I mean, is that a little selfish to say, can you just kind of get over it because I'm sick of, you know, watching you suffer? I mean, it, it seems is. a little insensitive. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> We have to realize that, you know, we probably all say dumb things at different points. True. We have to give people grace in that. Yes. Because literally, like, the next day, someone, I, was, I think it was like a week-long church thing that was happening, and, like, the next day I was there, and someone came up to me and said, it's going to be okay, they're going to be home. And I wanted to scream internally, how do you know? Mm. And then I realized, oh, anything anyone says to me is going to be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so honestly, it's not going to go well. So there really is no right thing to say, or, or I mean, what would oh, you no, suggest? There are. There are right things to okay. say. And you know what the best things to say were when I would, you know, wake up in the morning and find that somebody at midnight had texted me with, hey, I woke up and I was praying for your child. Oh, okay. Awesome. So that God was placing them on people's hearts and just to get a text, you know, an email, a note in the mail, you know, a letter, a card, someone to walk up to church with a card saying, I'm thinking of you and I'm praying for you. Hmm. Oh my gosh, those could get you over the worst times when you don't know how you're going to breathe another moment. That is awesome. Now you, uh, you're actually a veteran, you and your husband both. Now, how has your military training influenced how you handled this, this situation? I think it's been great in that it really taught us how to be tough. And how to, one of the sayings um, in basic training is suck it up and press on. <laughs> and really, so much of this has been us saying to ourselves, suck it up and press on, just keep going, just keep going. And we have seen the results of keeping moving forward. We could get stuck in that. You know, Mark Twain said the two most important days in a person's life are the day they're born and the day they find out why. And that's what we're searching for. Lord, and why did you allow this? And let me make sure I use every moment of this pain for your glory and for whatever it is you want, because you allowed this to Joseph when he was stolen from his family, sold, and then he became the vizier, the second in command over all of Egypt, and saved all these lives and saved the tribe of Israel that your son was born to. Mm. You had a plan then. You have a plan now. Let me find it. That's right. 
when we look at the stories of the Bible, uh, like you mentioned, Joseph being falsely accused, being put in prison multiple times, and then ultimately being used of God to save his entire family and the Jewish people uh, from famine. It wasn't fun when he was going through his training period, um, but you know that time in prison and uh, the time in Egypt was his training ground, so so to speak. And of course, you mentioned Job before. My gosh, what he went through, losing everything, uh, even becoming sick, losing his, his children, his family, his uh, livestock, everything. But then at the end of the story, being restored many times over, um, but going through it, it wasn't fun. And, and he had, God had sent him, what, three or four friends to torment or encourage him <laughs> in some way. Um, and, and what we were talking about earlier, some of the well-meaning friends who say things that just are probably not helpful uh, in those moments, but... You know, we, we press on, we get through it, and I think knowing that, that God is in control and that he has a purpose in this suffering is is very helpful um, when you're suffering like this. Because let's face it, we live in a broken, sinful world, and everybody suffers. I don't care who you are, what you believe, you're going to suffer in this life. But when you have hope and when you have these Bible stories that you can reference and, and you can have the living God speak to you and people really encouraging you, it can help you get through uh, just about anything. Uh, friend, you're listening to Divine Intervention Radio. I'm your host, Daniel Fazina, and our special guest is Marie White. Her website is mariewhiteauthor.com. She's the author of a number of books, including Strength for Parents of Missing Children, Surviving Divorce, Abduction, Runaways, and Foster Care. Marie, how have people responded to, to this book, and what, what are you hoping they'll get out of it? Let's put it that way. Oh, my goodness, the response has been incredible, Daniel. I thought I was writing for families like ours because there was no guidebook. There was nothing to go to. Mm. And so I wanted something that we could have used from day one till now. And what's happened is that people who have been going through this for 15 years are reading it and writing in and saying, this is changing my life now. I took my first vacation in the last 15 years because your book gave me permission to take care of me so I could keep fighting for my child. Wow. And then other people who are writing and saying, I don't have a missing child, but life is still hard, and everything in your book spoke to me. It helped me to see that God has a plan for me and gave me purposeful action so that I could continue moving forward and finding out what he wants for me in this life. Mm, That is awesome. I love that. And, you know, many times um, it's the traumas in our life that wake us up to our purpose, uh, if that makes sense. Um, you know, you becoming a missionary and, and founding this, uh, the YouTube channel, uh, it's called Bible Stories for Adults, is that right? That's correct. Okay. Uh, and amassing, you know, quite a following there, uh, half a million viewers, people who are hungry for the word, and it's a great niche mission field to, to be able to disciple and encourage adult believers. And I can think of, you know, in my own life, the trauma of going through cancer and being told I could be dead within a matter of weeks to a couple of months. Uh, that was 15 years ago, and that whole event gave birth to this radio program, Divine Intervention, where I interview other people who've had amazing miracles and um, answered prayers and just, you know, they can share their testimonies of how the Lord has worked in their life. I wouldn't want to go through it again, but I wouldn't give it up, that experience for anything, because it taught me a lot, first of all, and it also... Uh, led to a ministry. So if you're going through something like that, a trauma in your life, and you don't understand why, I just want you to press forward. You know, you don't see the big picture that God does. You're down in the valley, but he sees above all the mountains and everything. And when you come to the end of that valley, and you come out of it, and you come through it, you'll look back, and you'll see how the Lord was training you. He was growing you. He was teaching you. And it wasn't pleasant. I'm not even going to lie and say, oh, it was a bed of roses or whatever. It's, it's, you know, it's horrible at times, but he will carry you through it and that you'll see purpose on the other side. Romans 8.28, again, all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and who are the called according to his purpose. I had to hold on to that scripture going through the valley of the shadow of death and then coming out of it, looking back. It wasn't until years later until I looked back and, and saw you know, the implications of what the Lord did. So Marie, obviously you've, you're going through it. You're ministering to others, and I really commend you because you're not even out of the valley yet, but yet you're still reaching out. You're still encouraging others. You're still um, being a missionary, I guess, in a sense. God has been so good. The The coverage has been incredible. And actually, um, my third or fourth book, I can't remember which one, um, Changing Your Life in Just Ten Days, 
is actually available for free for all of your listeners. If they go to my website, they can get a copy of that for free and just have a book that will help to encourage them to make some changes to accomplish more in their lives. Awesome. And that's at uh, mariewhiteauthor.com? It is. mariewhiteauthor.com. Okay. Well, we just got about a minute or so left, but if there's someone listening to this um, interview who maybe they're not even a believer in the Lord, they're not sure if, if God is real or who Jesus is, what would you like to um, leave them with as a parting uh, piece of advice or encouragement? I would say that if you're wrong and there is a God, then I you need to know who he is because if there is a God then he made you and he loves you and he wants you to know him and just like these parents that are being kept from their children someone is keeping you from him I know that God is real I know him personally and that's how we're able to get through what we're getting through and I encourage you to go find him because he's waiting to know you Amen A keen piece of advice from our special guest, Marie White. Marie, thank you so much for joining us and sharing your story, and I wish you all the best uh, in finding your child and getting him home safely. Thank you. That'll be the update to the show. Oh, awesome. We'd love to have you back for that. Friend, again, you're listening to Divine Intervention Radio. I'm your host, Daniel Fazina. Our special guest has been Marie White, author of Strength for Parents of Missing Children, Surviving Divorce, Abduction, Runaways, and Foster Care. Uh, And you can also find her other books as well at mariewhiteauthor.com. Thanks so much for joining us, and tune in next time for another exciting episode of Divine Intervention Radio. Take care and God bless. You've been listening to Divine Intervention with your host, Daniel Fazina. You can email Daniel at divineintervention at mail.com. That's Divine Intervention at mail.com. All programs of Divine Intervention are available online at divineinterventionradio.com. That's divineinterventionradio.com. Join us next time here on Divine Intervention. I believe in miracles. Hi, I'm Kevin McCullough. You may know me from uh, Fox News Television or talk radio. I talk a lot about things that affect people's lives on a regular basis. And one of the things I've always wondered if people woke up wondering each morning is, could I work for myself? Could I find a business that would allow me to use the skills I have to pursue revenue that I need so that I can build a vision that I have? How would you like to be your own boss with no commute, no alarm clock, no employees or politics or compromises or discrimination? None of that educational requirement, but something positive that actually impacts people's lives. That's the opportunity of Ambit, an energy business that you can not only own now for less than $500, but make lots of money with. Call for your start today at 205-55-AMBIT. That's 205-55-AMBIT or online at freepowernow.com. Hey, this is Daniel Fazina of Divine Intervention Radio. The Bible contains some incredible stories of miracles and divine interventions. Jesus calmed a raging storm, healed paralytics, and even raised the dead. But are these types of events still happening today? The answer to this question, as you will see from reading my book, Divine Intervention, 50 True Stories of God's Miracles Today, is an emphatic yes. Contained within the book is a collection of amazing true stories that attest to this fact. You will read the astonishing first-hand accounts of people who have been healed of paralysis, terminal cancer, and tumors through prayer. You will see the love of God powerfully transform the life of an Islamic terrorist. You will witness the liberation of the demon-possessed, the resurrection of the dead, and much more. Prepare to be awed and inspired as you experience Divine Intervention. More information about Divine Intervention, 50 True Stories of God's Miracles Today can be found at www.divineinterventionradio.com or by calling 800 247 That's 1-800-247-4784.